Hello YouTube, my name's Nero and today we have some Call of Duty Advanced Warfare in this week's episode of Dear Nero, which is the weekly series here on my channel where subscribers send me in fan mail and or fan questions, and I do the best to go ahead and answer them. This week we have a nice little lineup of questions here for you guys, it's not a ton of them, there wasn't a ton sent in, there wasn't like a bunch of great questions I haven't answered a million times already, we did get some pretty good original ones here though, and I figured we'd go ahead and answer them in this week's episode. It might be a little bit shorter, but every time I say the episode may be a little bit shorter, I always end up going for 30 minutes, so we'll have to see how long this one is, but uh, we'll see about that. So let's just hop right into it with the very first question, he's going to write... Dear Nero, how is Search and Destroy in Advanced Warfare since there is no dead silence apart from Exomute but it only lasts for a short amount of time? Callum from the UK. So I'm assuming this maybe is from somebody who hasn't gotten the game yet or maybe they're waiting to get it for Christmas or whatever the situation may be. How is Search and Destroy in Advanced Warfare? More importantly, how is Dead Silence, how is the removal of Dead Silence working and the replacing of that with Exomute? How is all that going down? Because I made a couple of videos talking about that and some theories I had about the entire idea of it uh, going into Advanced Warfare. And I was actually kind of really disappointed. Like, what? how can you take out Dead Silence? How can you only have Exomute? So you can only be silent for 20 seconds out of an entire round of Search and Destroy. How's it going to work? Search and Destroy and Advanced Warfare is pretty amazing. It is uh, probably my most played game mode. I think it's actually definitely my most played game mode out of all the game modes in Advanced Warfare. I really enjoy playing it. Uh, I actually kind of have like a little bit of a Search and Destroy background. That's mainly what I played throughout Call of Duty 4 and World of War. And I played it a bit during Modern Warfare 2. But then trick shotting, like the rise of trick shotting happened in Modern Warfare 2. Then everybody started setting up with each other and stuff like that in, in public Search and Destroy matches. And so because of that, I'm like, this is just annoying to play against. Like... It just it's obnoxious, so I'm just gonna not play Search and Destroy anymore. And I started playing respawn game modes like uh, Ground War and Domination and things like that. And I've been doing that ever since. But here with Advanced Warfare, I've really kind of uh, kind of like a homecoming almost to Search and Destroy, and I started playing that a lot more. It's a lot of fun. I like it. Uh, how they basically did the game was they did it like what Black Ops 2 did, where the footsteps were just so silent by default that you don't even need Dead Silence. Like even if Dead Silence was a perk in the game, I wouldn't use it because you don't need it. You <laughs> you're so quiet by default. It's nigh impossible to hear somebody in this game uh, you can barely hear anything you can't hear somebody exo dashing all around you sometimes unless you really got your headset cranked up so it's actually pretty good that way you're basically silent all the time and because of that you don't need dead silence and exo mute was not as, as big of a deal as i thought it would uh be because uh, i remember thinking back like the exo mute when that came out I'm like that's so stupid so i assumed that everybody's footsteps would be like normal footsteps from like any Call of Duty besides Black Ops 2 where it's very, you know, night and day clear. You can hear somebody's footsteps and hear people coming. And the only way to counter that, to counter people hearing you, is to use Exomute, which only works for 20 seconds out of every every life. I was like, that's the stupidest idea ever. Why would they Why would they do this? But they end up making it so uh, footsteps are basically silent by default. So I really don't, I, I, I don't see the, the point of Exomute and why people would even consider using that thing. Because the footsteps are already so quiet by default. Where's the actual benefit with Exomute? I really don't know. But yeah, Switching the Story is great. I love the way it plays. The maps are very well laid out for that. I love uh, how how the new abilities in the game kind of work within the game mode. I like how Overclock works in the game mode because I can usually rush people really hard with a submachine gun way faster than they're probably expecting me to. And because of that, it's very nice. Like, I can be in their spawn. Yeah, just like that. I'm there and I'm, I'm in their face. I'm shooting down people and it's a lot of fun. You run up, run up get two kills and die get a ton of XP. Search and Destroy is a blast. Definitely the best way to level up in this game as well. So, if you haven't played uh, Search and Destroy yet, or maybe you haven't gotten Advanced Warfare yet, and you're, and you're wondering about, about like the best way to level up in Advanced Warfare once you get the game, play Search and Destroy. It's freaking amazing. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, when will you be doing the report card for Call of Duty Ghost? And I, this, I did not actually take this question from one person in particular. I probably got six or seven different people asking about this just for this week's episode of Dear Nero. And I got about the same amount of people asking about it in last week's episode of Dear Nero. And I get it all the time in my comment section. I get it all the time on Twitter. And it's absurd. All right, I'm going to do a report card for Call of Duty Ghost since people really like arbitrary numbers and letters so much. So to give a little backstory as to what I did, uh, basically... During Modern Warfare 3, I made a video called the Modern Warfare 3 Report Card, and I went over all the things in the game. Like I went over the perks and the guns and the kill streaks and the, the attachments, or probably I don't know, everything in the game, right? I basically gave it a score, like an American uh, school score. Like uh, it's probably they probably use the same system, maybe over in other countries as well. But A, B, C, D, and F, right? I would rate the maps like, oh, I thought the maps in this game were a B, a solid B, you know that kind of thing. And I did that. And I did the same thing in Black Ops 2. I'm like, here's 
here's my report card for Black Ops 2, which is actually kind of funny, which I said I said these are arbitrary numbers and letters, which, which they really are. Because like, even going back, like I went back and watched just recently my Black Ops 2 report card video. And I was watching that video and I was listening to the points that I was making and watching myself here. And I found, I found myself disagreeing with myself because opinions change over time. And I'm like, huh, well... <laughs> Well, that's awkward. So I'm sitting here watching like this is stupid. This is not very this isn't very good content I mean, I guess it's entertaining to watch to kind of get like an idea of what someone's thinking about the game or What they think about certain aspects of the game, but ultimately it's all pointless You know that kind of thing So I really kind of put off making a Call of Duty Ghost report card video one because I didn't think it's really that cool of a video Which is like hey, I'm gonna assign random scores to, to things in the game and my opinion on that's probably gonna change within the week You know that kind of thing. I didn't, I didn't see it as entirely as entirely necessary, but you guys want you guys want stuff. Let, let's let's give a report card. Let's give a report card. Maps <sighs> D minus. They were all pretty atrocious, aside from a few. There were a few. There were a few maps in Call of Duty Ghost. Some uh, some gems, some diamonds in the rough, if you will, in that game. I think Fog was definitely the best map in that game. It was a DLC map, so that really kind of speaks to the character of the game. But um, yeah, I didn't like the maps at all. The guns, you might as well throw an A. Honestly, to the Call of Duty Ghost guns, uh, just because it's an Infinity War game. And Infinity War games, basically how they run their stuff, is everything is overpowered. I mean, of course, the MSBS was ridiculously powerful at the beginning of the game, and that was very evident. Too. We all we all kind of saw that. But once they end up patching that, and they end up you know putting out a few patches here or there. Everything was relatively balanced. Of course, some guns were overused. AK-12 was overused. The Honey Badger was way overused. The Amtar X was overused. But everything in the game was powerful. That's how Infinity War games are. Every gun melts you very quickly. You know, there's no there's no reaction time. There's no time to turn on anybody. Turn on anybody. It's just you know people die very quickly. That's how it gets. You might as well give the guns a. I don't see a reason why not. The kill streaks. I'm gonna give D, not D minus, but D. Uh, just because they were all relatively bad, <laughs> they weren't very good. A lot of the kill streaks in that game were not uh, were not very powerful. Definitely not as good as things uh, from Black Ops 2 or the original Black Ops or Modern Warfare 2 or hell, even Modern Warfare 3. And that's saying something. So uh, the kill streaks in that game were just not very good. I, I just um, I did not find them very good, very enjoyable, or anything like that. So what did we just cover the perks, the perks. I didn't like the perk system. Didn't like it. Didn't like the perk system in Call of Duty Ghost either. So uh, basically, what the Call of Duty Ghost perk system was was it gave you a ton of customization. You know, pick ten. It's so it's so crazy. Use these points and pick your perks, and you're not limited by certain things being in a certain category, like uh, tier or tiered perks. Like let's say you want three perks, that would be in perk the perk one slot. Well, you can do that under this system. I didn't really care for it, to be perfectly honest, because they basically took perks from, let's say, the original Black Ops. Uh, I think, was that the last game they had pro perks? Like, it might have been. Wait, the Marvel 3 had pro perks? I'm getting old. I'm losing my memory here. But I know for a fact the original Black Ops had pro perks, right? You can get Slay of Hand, which by default would just make it so you reload faster. Then once you do a bunch of challenges, you can get Slay of Hand Pro, which not only doesn't make you reload faster, but now it also allows you to aim down sights faster. It basically gives you an extra benefit. And what Call of Duty Ghost did was they basically took a bunch of pro perks from original Black Ops and separated them into two, sometimes three different perks. And so if you wanted to get a setup that would be similar to a setup that you would choose in the original Black Ops, you like basically couldn't do it in Call of Duty Ghosts just because the point value was too high. You couldn't end up doing it as efficiently as you wanted to. You always found yourself going, okay, well, I have enough for almost a good class, but I can't quite get the perfect class that I want out of this. And it was really kind of annoying that way. And so for me personally, I didn't really enjoy that a whole lot. Honestly, I didn't like Call of Duty Ghosts a whole lot. If I had to give it a grade, I'd give it a D. I, I think it was uh, not a good example of what Call of Duty could be or should be. I thought it was a very unenjoyable game to play overall. And honestly, it almost killed my enthusiasm for the franchise. I think, I think I'm rebuilding that enthusiasm here in Advanced Warfare. Slowly but surely, but it took a big hit, honestly, with Call of Duty Ghosts. I thought Call of Duty Ghosts was atrocious. Uh, you guys saw me probably pull up on Twitter a million times last year. I just, I hate Infinity War. They make a trash product. I would not care if they were to just cease to exist and we would basically, you know, only swap between Sledgehammer and Treyarch. That's fine. Like, Infinity War to me is just the worst game developer to make awful games. And I just, I'm, I'm a big advocate of the idea of don't like it, don't play it. And if you actually kind of go back and look at the videos I posted over, say, the last six months or so of, of Call of Duty Ghost's life cycle, you'll realize that. 
I didn't actually post Call of Duty Coast. Yeah, I didn't. I Of course, I did Chem Strike Saturday. And when a new DLC came out, I covered that because I'm a YouTuber. I make videos that people uh, like to watch. And, you, know, you guys, the new DLC is, is out. Let's do, let's do some walkthroughs of the DLC. You know, I do that kind of stuff. I, I like to try and make helpful guide videos and stuff like that. And so um, I would do videos like that. But for the most part, just about all the gameplay was always not actually Call of Duty Ghost. It was always like Black Ops 2 or Call of Duty 4 or World of War or Modern Warfare 2. It was always any other game besides that. Because I didn't like it. I really did not enjoy playing the game a whole lot. I really didn't. It just was not that much fun. So as a result, a lot of my videos weren't actually about Call of Duty Ghost. They were just about different things in general. And I thought that was kind of a cool thing. I was able to do that and not make my channel specifically around one game. Well, it's around one franchise, but around the most recent Call of Duty game, I was able to suffer through that for about six months until the game finally uh, stopped being a thing. And I'm very happy about that because I just did not like Call of Duty Ghost at all didn't like it at all. That's probably, that's probably that's honestly part of the reason why I didn't make an actual report card video where I go in depth with any of my answers or anything because it would have just been an annoying rant fest about how much I didn't like the game that much. So It wouldn't have been a whole lot of fun, but not have been a whole lot of fun. But uh, yeah, Call of Duty Ghost, boo, Infinity Ward, boo. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, what is your opinion about Grand Theft Auto V being banned from certain stores worldwide? Man... That is a fun one. So he did not leave his or her name in this question. That's a fun question there. So if you guys don't know, there are some stores out there, which I know Target Australia is one of them. I'm trying to think of what some other examples may be, but they're not coming to my mind right now. There are some stores that are basically banning the sale of Grand Theft Auto V in their stores. And it's because people are petitioning that Grand Theft Auto V is a game that promotes violence towards women, which is pretty crazy to me because there is this entire thing going on, which is so annoying to watch sometimes like I don't partake in it at all I don't actively seek out information about this whole feminism war and Gamergate or anything like that I don't seek out any of that stuff because it's fucking stupid but uh, I do see it occasionally I follow a bunch of YouTubers on Twitter I, I of course I am subscribed to a bunch of YouTubers just like you guys at the end of the day I, I, while I make YouTube videos I'm also I, I like to I watch people I'm a YouTube viewer as well I'm just like you guys in that I have my favorite YouTubers and I watch them every day or semi every day you know i pay attention to people's stuff and i see these people that you know i watch and i have an invested interest in and they're all partaking in, the, in this thing this whole feminism thing they're all offering their opinions on stuff and what is the most annoying thing about it is what it seems to be to me is the, the entire basis of this argument with grand theft auto 5 and its supposed advocation for violence against women is that Women are targets in that game. That, that That's basically the whole point. Women are targets in this game, and they allow you to beat women in this game. If you so choose, if you so choose, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, you can, in fact, go kill a hooker in Grand Theft Auto V. You can, in fact, find an innocent female pedestrian out there in the street, and you can run her over in your truck several times, several times. You can go ahead and do that. You can shoot them. You can hit them with a baseball bat. You can set them on fire. You can... God, any number of things. You can find a woman driving a car. You can think to yourself, man, I don't think women should be driving. You can go pick them up in, in, in a cargo bob, and then you go drop her out in the middle of the ocean. You can do that if you, if you so desire. And because of that, these people seem to be thinking... Well, this game is very violent against women. We need to go ahead and make sure we're not selling that kind of thing in our store. That is a scummy game for what you can do to women in that game. But I, this, this, this is the thing that doesn't make sense. You guys are rapists. This is the thing that does not make sense. The entire idea behind, it, behind like the feminism movement stuff is you want equal rights for women. right? You want equal rights for women. So you want women to be equal but you don't want them to be equal in video games. Because of Grand Theft Auto, ladies and gentlemen, all the things I stated earlier are also applicable to men. You can do all that stuff to men. That's the point of Grand Theft Auto V. It's a game about crime. You are a criminal. No, at no point in Grand Theft Auto V or really any of the Grand Theft Auto games do they ever try to say, hey, I'm actually a good person in this crazy world. No, you are a criminal. You are an evil person that can go on a mass murdering spree at, at, the, at, the, at the flick of a stick, the pull of, a, the, pull of the right trigger on, on, on your controller, right? You can go on these massive rampages and do whatever you want. That's the point of the game. That's what the game is. It's basically, of course, there's a story and stuff like that in a single player. You can go 
ahead and play with. But for the most part, what a lot of people use Grand Theft Auto for is just a giant open world sandbox in a fictional city where you can do whatever you want. Do I say you want to be, you want to use it as a business simulator and you want to try and become a business tycoon, buy some really cool property, play the, play the, play the stocks, and, you know, do that. You can do that within the game. Do you want to pretend to be some kind of hardened criminal that goes around and does drug busts and do, do the missions to do drug deals and stuff? You can have that. You can fulfill that fantasy because that's, that's the thing with crime, isn't it? It's a very interesting uh, medium for us to, for us to partake in because it, it's, it's the forbidden fruit in a way. Like where if we, we want to experience this. It seems cool. It's dangerous, but we're not going to do it in real life because there's actual consequences to that stuff. There's actual consequences to being a gangbanger. There's actual consequences to making millions of dollars, you know, selling drugs and stuff like that. So we do that stuff in a video game just to see what it's like, just to kind of play around with it, you know, have some fun with it. Of course, we won't do it in real life, but we do that kind of stuff in a video game. And in that video game, you have the option to kill men and or women, depending on what you want to do. You can kill literally anybody in the game. The game does not discriminate as to who you can kill against. And the entire the entire thing that these feminists are doing, you're like, we want equal rights for women, but don't kill them in video games because we're above being killed. You should only be able to kill the men. And it doesn't make any sense. It does. You are literally contradicting yourself with that. The game itself does not actually promote any kind of violence towards women. At no point in the game is there an instance where they say, let's go beat up that woman because we like to beat women. In fact, most of the stuff, you're beating up on men. The stuff with Trevor and, and that one guy's cousin, I can't remember the name because honestly, I thought they were pretty forgettable characters, but Trevor and that one guy that he was with and that guy's cousin, uh, Trevor's friend's cousin, the whole thing going on there, the whole rapey part, some really weird stuff, weird, I'm getting some weird vibes from those guys in that game, right? And all that stuff was happening, Not it never involved women. It never involved women. There's never a part, there's never an entire part of that where they were like, you know, women are our targets. We are targeting women in this. And then people will point out like, well, you can go kill a hooker. You can have a hooker. You can go have her ha go with her and have sex with you in your car. And it's like, yeah, it's a crime game. Prostitution is a thing. It's definitely a real thing, and therefore it's in the video game. You can have sex with a hooker in the game if you so choose. Is that degrading towards women? No, because there's also male hookers in real life. There's I don't think there's any male hookers in the game. Maybe we need a DLC with male hookers so people will shut up about it, but we can end up having that as well, whatever. But at no point do you actually, uh, is it said to you, hey, go kill some hookers, go kill these sex workers because they need to be killed or stuff. No, you have the option to because they're an NPC like anyone else in the game. You can literally kill anybody in the game. That, that's 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 the point of the game, but the entire idea of it to make the stop this long-winded rant. Uh, the entire point of it is stupid. People are contradicting themselves uh, all the time, left and right, with this thing, and it's a bunch of soccer moms that have nothing else better to do with their time. That that's that's who I think is buying this kind of thing. And is it silly? I think I think Target of Australia needs to grow some balls. Grow some balls. Stand up for yourself. It's is uh, stuff being pushed around by people. It's a freaking online petition that you, that you're letting that you're letting get in your way. That is just absurd just absurd but uh yeah it, it's grand theft auto 5 it's 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 it is what it is next question he writes dear nero what is your favorite call of duty to snipe in max from maryland max i would say after some long consideration after writing down this question i'd say world of war overall was my favorite game to snipe in because it was the first game i ever really tried to snipe in i had a whole lot of fun with it just by um when i first got into call of duty i probably said this a million times but when i first got into call of duty i wanted to be a sniper that was really cool to me uh playing the medal of honor games on my playstation 2 I, I especially like the stuff you could do with snipers. Something about it was cool. Being that guy that's you know, several hundred yards away, you know, one shot, one kill, you know, and 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 an echo in an open field, you know, that kind of thing. I love the entire idea of that. You know, taking down some head general or something like that, just one bullet, no one knows where it came from. You sneakily get away and stuff like that. And, you know, the the stealth aspects of it and stuff. So when I got into Call of Duty, I wanted to do that. I wanted to be just that, but in an online world and. It didn't work out very well uh, <laughs> to start with, but eventually I kind of got used to it. I probably told this story before as well, but you know, to reiterate, I think it's a fun story. It's some of my favorite memories of Call of Duty. Uh, on the map outskirts in World at War, there is, if you guys play the game, there is a giant church tower on that map. And this church tower goes up really high. Like, the church itself is only is only like a like a one-story thing, but there's a giant tower in the church. Like, this thing takes you up, if I had to estimate, probably four stories. Like, you're way up there. You can see literally the entire map from the from this uh, from this tower in the church. And so what I would do, and keep in mind this is a giant map, I would play hardcore team deathmatch, because I thought hardcore was the greatest, because what really annoyed me was 
was I would, I would find these amazing spots in the back of the map to snipe people. Then they would watch the kill cam and they would realize where I was at. Then they'd come and kill me. And of course, I'm always showing up on the main map every time I shot and things like that. So I'd go play hardcore where there was no kill cams. And unless they had UAV up, you know, they would not know where I was shooting from. I thought that was a really cool thing. I could actually try and play my role of a stealthy sniper a little bit better. I would lay down in, in, in a flower bed in the very, like, like the back portion of the map where nobody ever is. I would, I would be all the way laying down there in my flower bed and the reason I was in the flower bed because I'm wearing a ghillie suit right I'm gonna look more more camouflaged in if I'm laying in this flower bed right I'm surrounded by shrubbery and stuff it, it made sense and what I would do throughout an entire like 10 minute long team death match is I would lay there and hard scope at the back of the tower because I had a perfect shot on that tower at all times and anytime anyone from the enemy team were to walk in that tower boom one shot, one kill, guy would drop, and I'd be like, yeah, I would finish games, like, entire, like, 10 minute long matches, like, 2-0, 3-0, 2-1, that kind of thing, right, and I had a lot of, I had so much fun doing it, I thought it was so great, I definitely enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed every second, I thought that was a whole lot of fun to snipe in, I will say, though, Modern Warfare 2 is probably a close second. Uh, in terms of enjoy enjoying sniping, you can do a lot of really fun uh, wild call scout sniping in that game as well. So uh, okay, World of War and Modern Warfare 2, I, I'd say, were my favorite games to snipe in. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, do you think Advanced Warfare will be at the X game just like it was in the past for Call of Duty Ghost? And do you think the X games will continue to support Call of Duty for future events? Darian from Canada. So Darian, I'm going to say... I bet they will. I, I don't have the information in front of me here, but I would assume having uh, Call of Duty on the X Games was a big deal. If anything, chances are a lot of gamers probably don't watch the X Games. I'm just guessing at that. Just from stereotypes, I know I'm a horrible person for stereotyping, but just a, just a stereotype maybe that people that play a lot of Call of Duty or play a lot of video games, chances are maybe they're not as into sports as maybe other people would be. I don't know. I'm just guessing at that. So I would imagine actually bumped up the ratings somewhat to the X Games. I think more people probably watch the X Games this year just because Call of Duty was involved rather than uh, the amount of people that watched X Games the previous year. I don't know though because I don't have the numbers in front of me. Do I think they'll do it? Definitely. I definitely think that they will but i gotta say man i made a video talk about this last year and i still to this day i still stick to it i still think it's bullshit i do not think that that professional gamers should be earning the same medals as actual athletes it's it doesn't make sense it's silly to me there's people out there there's did you know there's people that have literally died at the x games like people have literally died at the x games in pursuit of, of gold at the x games in pursuit of trying to win and trying to do some crazy stuff they've actually died doing it it's that extreme the stuff that they're doing their, the the toll it takes on their bodies and everything and then you know you look at that and all what, what these people do and how what these people are fucking doing backflips on dirt bikes and stuff and competing with each other to see who could do the craziest stuff and then there's this guy over here sitting in a chair playing call of duty and they're and they're both earning the same thing they're both earning medal like the same x games medal and to me that's really kind of crappy and i really hope they would come up with some other some other kind of prize for the call of duty people because it's just it's gotta be a slap in the face man it's really gotta be Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, do you think Advanced Warfare feels more like a Treyarch game or an Infinity War game? Charlie from England. So Charlie, I would say, I'd say it's more of an Infinity War game. And a couple reasons for that. So the time to kill is not as much, uh, it's not like Infinity War so much. I'm happy about that. I'm very happy that the time to kill in this game is a lot better. It's it's closer to Treyarch, all things considered, uh, in terms of the time to kill. Because you don't melt so ridiculously quickly in Advanced Warfare. And I definitely love that. I'm very happy about that. It actually gives people with gun scale uh, a bit of an advantage over others. Although with the Ball 27 still running rampant, uh, gun skill is kind of a lost art, I would suppose. But I definitely think the time to kill is pretty good in this game. But overall, just the layout of the maps, the way the kill streaks perform, and uh, just the way the map. Uh, Basically, the layout of the maps, the way the maps flow, the way the kill streaks perform, uh, the color palette even, just the way, just the way the the way the colors even kind of look. It's like, you know what? This kind of has a lot of similarities to me to an Infinity Ward game. But I gotta say, the color palette overall is a bit better. Certain maps, you're like, oh man, it's dreary. But other maps, it's like, wow. It is really beautiful here. So I think overall, just by in terms of the feel of the game, it feels more like an Infinity Ward game, but it is kind of close to Treyarch. It's a kind of a nice in-between, which I got to say is pretty nice. So if there's Treyarch, game, if there's Treyarch style games, then there's Infinity Ward style games, and there's two very distinct differences between the two. If there's two different kinds of games right there, and then you throw in Sledgehammer in the middle, that is kind of like one, but also kind of like the other, kind of a nice in-between, that's pretty great, because then you got three very distinct different games that are going to be 
coming out in rotation, and that really kind of fits the entire idea of the three-year development cycle for Call of Duty. So I think it's definitely a cool thing. But yeah, if I had to pick, probably closer to Infinity War. I don't know. Let, let me know in the comments. Uh, this is something I actually kind of had to... Uh, Kind of had to think long and hard about. I'm still kind of un unsure what my answer is, but I think it's more towards Infinity War. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, Advanced Warfare. Where does it fall under? Is it more like a Terror game or more like an Infinity War game? Let me know about that. Next day and final question, he's going to write, Dear Nero, do you think Advanced Warfare will be the next Call of Duty 4 and be a revolutionary game for the Call of Duty franchise? Keep up the great work. Sam from Chicago. Man, that is quite the title to give a game. COD 4 was revolutionary. It was the most revolutionary Call of Duty to date, in fact. And the reason for that being, a little history lesson for some of you guys out there that may not know this, Call of Duty 4 was revolutionary for the simple fact that it added so much to the game that was not in any of the prior games. It was not in Call of Duty 2 or Call of Duty 3. So what Call of Duty 4 did was it was for the first time we had kill streaks. Kill streaks were not a thing before Call of Duty 4. And now there were perks. Perks were not a thing in Call of Duty 4. Now there were custom classes. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Did Call of Duty 3 have custom classes? Actually, I don't think Call of Duty 3 had custom classes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it, it, it was the first game where you got to make your own classes, and you had perks, and you had kill streaks, and you had all, the, all, all this stuff, uh, customization in terms of the camos and stuff. It was nuts. It was freaking nuts. It was a beautiful game. It was rated like one of the best looking games uh, of, of its time. If you look back, it's obviously dated. It's definitely not as good looking as if you can it to other stuff, especially stuff like Black Ops 2, which is just, let's face it, a gorgeous game. You know, it's not like that, but it was a revolutionary game before its time because of all the things it added, add in perks and create a class and kill streaks and things like that, right? No other game has really revolutionized much like Call of Duty 4 did. Now, some people point to Modern Warfare 2 and they say Modern Warfare 2 was revolutionary because they made it so you could choose your kill streaks. Hmm? I'm like, yeah, but that's not as revolutionary as, as the initial addition of kill streaks into the game or the addition of perks and attachments and camos and all that stuff and just the entire create class as we know it you know i don't think it's as revolutionary as that then every single year they can they try and add new things i suppose you look at the cod point system in black ops once again that's kind of a gimmick thing that was never seen in call of duty and you know it's not as revolutionary as the actual inception of kill streaks and create a class uh you look at the score streak system in black ops 2 and eh, not so not so much on the revolutionary end where does uh, Advanced Warfare fall in this category. Once again, you kind of look in, back at the uh, Call of Duty Ghost in the Pick 10 system. What, where does Advanced Warfare fall in this category? Well, I think the first thing we need all, we need all do is stop acting like Sledgehammer Games reinvented the wheel by giving us jetpacks. Um, while it's a cool addition, while it's a cool addition, no hate from me, I love them. Love myself, I love me some jetpacks. They're fun, I like my dashes, I like my strafes. It's fun stuff, but let's not act like it's the biggest thing in the world. Let's not act like it's giant. And actually, I was watching some, uh, I, I don't think they stole this from them or anything, but I'm just saying, I, I went back and watched one of my old Titanfall videos yesterday. There are some striking similarities. <laughs> There really is. Even down to the fact where you press the left bumper and you have a special ability based upon something that you picked with your class, then both games do that. And they both. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Let's not act like they reinvented the wheel, though. You know, it. You can dash forward. You can. Uh, you can double jump. Which double jumping has been double jumping was in Mario, guys. It's it's um, it's the first thing we see, we've seen this stuff in Call of Duty, but it's not super revolutionary. Now the entire idea of uh, customizing your kill streaks, be able to add add on to them depending on what you want to do with it. That's a pretty cool system. I think that's a pretty neat idea. I definitely commend them for. Uh, for making that happen. I think it's kind of a cool thing. I would, I would actually like to see something like that happen with future Call of Duty games, assuming, because for this to work, but actually, maybe not. Assuming, of course, they would have to go ahead and uh, uh, continue with the score streak system. Now, I was about to say, well, it would have to be a score streak system, otherwise it wouldn't work. But it would work. You would just uh, up the kills. If it, if it went back to a kill-based system, like in the original Black Ops, like in the original Black Ops, where, let's take, for example, instead of the Warbird, being a 800 point streak or whatever it is, uh, it'll be an eight kill streak instead. And if you want to upgrade your warbird, let's say you want to give it uh, rockets or something like that, well now it's a nine kill streak. Yeah, they could do that. They could do that. They could. That's it would still give them room to actually go ahead and go back and make it so you could go off the kill base system rather than the score base system. But regardless of that, I do think it's a pretty revolutionary game. 
all things considered. Will it be as revolutionary as Call of Duty 4? Time's going to tell, and I'll tell you what's, what's going to be able to tell this, right? What will actually determine whether or not Advanced Warfare is actually a revolutionary game is if these exosuits continue in other Call of Duty games. If the exosuits are a one-time thing, kind of like the COD point system in, in the original Black Ops, then it'll be forgotten. Well, it won't be forgotten. It'll be remembered as the thing that, you know, we got, we remember that time we could double jump? Remember that time we had them boost strafes? We could do that. That was pretty fun for, for one year, or maybe, you know, two, depending on if uh, Sledgehammer wants to continue on with that kind of thing. But, you know, I don't think it's as revolutionary as Call of Duty 4 yet. Time will tell whether or not it will be if if the entire idea of customizing your kill streaks goes continues on and uh, the entire idea of having exosuits and all the advanced movement mechanics if that continues on in future Call of Duty games then definitely it would be a revolutionary game but I still think all things considered instead of it being the most revolutionary game for the Call of Duty franchise I think it will be the most revolutionary game for the Call of Duty franchise since COD 4. Because COD 4 is really what uh, what turned Call of Duty into what it is today. So that is this week's episode of Dear Nero, ladies and gentlemen. I knew it would go on way longer than I thought it would, even with a rather limited amount of questions. What can I say? I'm an old windbag that likes to just continue talking until literally the point where my voice is actually starting to hurt a little bit. So hopefully you guys still enjoyed this episode of Dear Nero. If you guys like to send in your guys' questions for next week's episode of Dear Nero, this is how you do it. Go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Nero Cinema. Go to the About tab, and from there you'll find the Send Message button. And once you're there, send me a message, shoot me your question. If I can give you a piece of advice, start your question off with the words Dear Nero. That way when I'm scrolling through all my questions, uh, all my messages I should say, I can see which ones are specifically sent for Dear Nero, and that way it's easier to sort through them. It's definitely a lot nicer if you guys go ahead and do that. So do that. If you guys like to submit your guys' questions for next week's episode of Dear Nero and you have a chance to be featured on next week's episode, that would definitely be pretty cool. I hope you guys all enjoyed this week's episode of Dear Nero. And if you did, please be sure to leave a rating. Hope you guys all have a wonderful day.